All right. Hello and welcome to another expert inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM joining you from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Matt Muscat, who is in Grand Rapids, Michigan. How are you doing, Matt? I'm doing great, John. Thanks for having me today. Yeah, and Matt is marketing director at Treadstone Funding, one of the top uh, boutique marketing lenders. And then you founded uh, Maltese Marketing, a boutique digital marketing firm. And you are the author of the book, well, let me just put it up here, TAG, Tangible Action Guide for Real Estate Marketing. And what we wanted to talk about today was um, referrals, right? Who doesn't want referrals? And people talk about, oh, ask for referrals, ask for referrals. And then oftentimes people come back and say, well, I asked for a bunch of, I asked people for referrals, but nobody had any for me. And then they just give up and move on. Uh, you have a different approach. You're talking about uh, tracking the referrals you give in order to get the referrals you want. So what's, what's the, what's the difference in the approach? Yeah. So, you know, for the first couple of years that I was in sales and marketing, you, you got it exactly right. You know, my boss would say, you just need to make more phone calls and you just need to call people, ask for the business, you know, get the sale, that high deep personality. But, you know, I think that can be really awkward for a lot of people. Number one, it's like, well, if I call someone, what do I say? And eventually, like you said, people don't know what to say. So they just don't, they stop calling, right? They try it. They don't get a million dollar sale the first day around. So they stop calling. So what I realized was that there's, you know, throughout the course of the, the day, the week, the month, you know, between my wife and I, you know, look at our credit card statement, for God's sake, we're, we're spending tens of thousands of dollars at all kinds of businesses. And we're going to all kinds of restaurants and bars and buying clothes and taking our kids to karate. We're meeting all these people and every single person that you meet, you could help them in some way, shape or form. But most of us don't think to ask or we don't think of like what the value is that we're giving to these people. Um, so I always say like every time you talk to someone, ask how you can help them if you can't immediately figure it out. Like if I know you sell something, John, I know that you'd probably appreciate a referral. So then the question is, hey, John, how can I, how can I refer you properly? Like if someone wanted to, you know, if someone wanted to, you know, start using, you know, pipeline or CRM, like how would they get in touch with you? How could I connect them? As soon as I make you aware that I'm trying to help you, it's a lot easier afterwards for me to tell you how you could help me if, and this is the best part, if you didn't already ask me. Right. If, you know, in most English speaking cultures, the normal way that a conversation goes is I say, hey, John, how are you? You answered, and then what are you gonna say back? I'm gonna say, good, how are you, Matt? Exactly, and once you've done that, you've, you've opened it up, to, it's now an open-ended question, and I can now control the conversation and take it anywhere I wanna go, in which case I'll usually su subtly mention kind of what I do and what I'm looking for, what I'm good at, et cetera. Um, but again, the referrals that people give are usually not tracked. So we do, most of us do give them, but most of us don't track them. And I think the real value here isn't just in going out and spending lots of money at lots of different businesses. It's in tracking the referrals that you're giving out and the value that you're bringing to them so that you can then make the phone call or have that per, uh, in-person conversation. Hey, um, I sent you over the Smiths to your, to your furniture store. Uh, they said they needed a sofa. Were they able to buy it? Oh, yeah, yeah, they bought them. Well, was that a good customer for you? Would you like it if I sent over more people like John and John and Susan? And then you say yes. Okay, well, actually, I would love to ask you for a favor. So the way that I'm able to refer you business is when I meet new people, I do a loan for them. Um, the next time you talk to someone who might need to refinance or to consolidate debt, would you mind referring them to me? That would mean a lot. That's kind of how I provide for my family. It's a much yeah. easier ask once you've done something positive for someone else yeah no i i, I agree and I, I think it's a it's an it's an elegant approach because as i said the approach for most people is just say oh hey matt do you know anybody else who could use uh, who could use my service and and the point is as well i think that people overlook too is if i ask you just a direct question like that it's unlikely that anybody's going to pop into your head immediately yeah. anyway. So there you're going to say, mm, no, I don't, uh, not right now. And then I'm going to strike you off as, okay, Matt has no referrals for me. But the fact is you might. Right. Well, and the other piece too, right, is that <clears throat> not everybody is in sales, right? Like, so mm -hmm. you and I are both clearly like sales is a topic that's on our mind all the time. So people like us are more likely to give a referral to someone without actually expecting one in return. And that's great, but the majority of people out there 
aren't like that. So sometimes you not only have to like tell them that you want the referral, but you also, and that you have time, but also you need to explain to certain people how to refer you. Like how does someone give you a customer with a warm hand up where it's likely to be successful, right? Like everybody wants a warm lead. Nobody wants a cold lead. If you don't explain to people how to give you what you want. It's less likely that you'll get it. Most yeah. of, I don't know if yeah. it ever feels like this to you, but most salespeople just kind of like, they, they kind of go with this, like this happiness mindset where if they just think they're, if they're a good person, business will come to them. And that's great. Like it's a, it, it, that's a great way to think, but it's not actually going to guarantee your business versus having a strategy in place and doing it in a repeatable and predictable way. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it's interesting, interesting just coming back to that idea of tracking, because I do remember the, the first house that I bought here in the States, uh, the, the mortgage broker actually at the time that we were referred to, referred to by my accountant. And he had on his wall, he had this whole chart, uh, like an organization chart, and he could track every referral he okay. got all the way down. And, you know, he would send gifts and all of that. But to your point, if you were to track all the ones outgoing as well, I mean, you'd have a great, you'd have a, gr a great insight into knowing where to focus your energies. Yeah. And, you know, the funny thing is, I, you know, I didn't come up with this genius idea myself. <laughs> I was in our, um, in our, in our, in our CRM system a couple months ago. And I noticed that right by the tab for referrals received, there was a tab for referrals given. And I was like, oh my gosh, like out of my 50 salespeople, no one has ever used this tab. Now, I'm sure that we're all giving referrals every day, whether that be to a realtor, an accountant, an insurance agent, but none of us are tracking it. So what would happen if we started? And not surprisingly, those are, once you track it, you can then make the phone call. Um, and you'll also be able to see like, if some, if you're a really big part of someone's business. So if I were to, you know, let's say on every single mortgage transaction, there is an insurance agent. You gotta have homeowner's insurance unless you're privately wealthy. So if I call my insurance agent at the end of the year, after I sent him 100 deals, I kind of have an idea that he made at least 500 bucks a pop off that, right? So I sent this guy $50,000. I mean, like, that's like people, people play game shows and yeah. hope to win, you know, $50,000. So I sent this guy 50 grand. When I call him, number one, he's going to pick up my phone call. Mm. And number two, I'm going to hold him a little bit accountable to, hey, like, I sent you 50 deals. Can you, you sent me one. Can we work our way to getting up to 10. Do you need, can I give you some training on how to refer me? It makes it a great conversation. Um, and it's just, it's just good information to have. Now, hopefully you're tracking the referrals that you're receiving also, but tracking referrals given is just a, it's a new way to do things that I don't think enough people are taking advantage of in any, in any um, industry. Yeah, no, I, I would agree. I would agree with you. And it certainly it does take the angst out of it as well, as you said, because, uh, you've already done something for the other person. But I guess that's also, you also need to have that kind of sharing mentality to begin with, like you said, I mean, you know, referring without expecting an immediate, you know, you're not just send you over a referral. Hey, Matt, I just sent you a referral now quickly, send me one back. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, and I, I sometimes what I usually do on my end is I put a note in my calendar for a month out to call the person I referred and to, or to call the person I sent the referral to and check in like, hey, was that a good referral? Like, I want to make sure I'm not wasting your time. I want to send you people that are good leads for you. And every once in a while, you find out that the one you sent wasn't the type of customer that they're looking for. And then it shows them that you care. And it shows them that you're willing to learn how to help them. And they feel like you're investing in them. So it's there's there's a couple sides to it. And yeah, no, I was going to say that I think that's really important. The education piece there is like educating the, the people on what a good referral is, what it looks like, what that referral is. Again, I think it's just having that kind of systematic approach to it as opposed to just it being another kind of thing that you do on the side. Yeah, well, and, you know, one of the other interesting things is like social media really opens up a huge opportunity for referrals, regardless of your industry. Because if you, most people use social media to shout, right? Like we're all going mm -hmm. on posting and we're just posting about our business, about our kids, about the food we ate, whatever. Um, for me, it's about the wine that I drink and my kids. But, you know, if you use social media to listen instead, 
you go through and you read what other people are posting. You look at the images and you try to figure it out. Almost in every 20 posts, someone is asking for help. Someone's saying, hey, I'm looking for a recommendation on a place to take my wife on a date. I'm looking for, I'm um, going to XYZ hotel for a vacation. Any recommendations on things to do in the area? If you simply use those questions as opportunities to make a referral to someone or to just connect with people you haven't talked to in forever, it can be a huge, huge advantage. I'd be shocked. I would challenge anyone to go on Facebook or Instagram for you know 20 minutes and not be able to refer at least one person out. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think that's I think that's a great point as well, is to look beyond the traditional, because when most people think referrals, they think, oh, I sold something to this company and Matt was the point person, therefore I'll ask Matt for the referral. But to your point is there's so many other ways you can go about this. Yeah. And we, the other thing too is to like really... I always tell people, and this is this is like, I guess, taking referrals off on a tangent, but I always tell people like, don't reward someone for sending you a referral only when it closes or only when the sale happens. I like to reward the act of referring because I don't like, I don't care if you send me five and, and you know, none of them close. I just want you to get me, I want to get you into the habit of referring me so we can really form that habit in your brain of like, anytime you think of real estate or mortgages, think of me. Anytime I think of CRM, I'm going to think of you. And so I like to reward, whether it's through a thank you or through a gift or through something else, I like to reward the act of the referral, not necessarily the end results. Yeah. And I think, and I think that's another really critical point there is because, yeah, mostly we just, we reward people only when they when something closes from mm -hmm. us and, and, and to your point, the reward doesn't have to be financial. It doesn't have to be anything major. It can be an acknowledgement. It can be a small gift. It can be so many different things. It can be a, Hey, John, I really appreciate you having me on the podcast today. It means a lot to me. It's helping me grow my business. Yeah. I mean, even the little thank you, the, I appreciate you. You're a big deal in my life goes a long way. And especially for some industries where you physically can't do a gift where it might be against your compliance rules and all that stuff. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. Um, so what are, the, what are the pieces of advice would you have for people around, uh, around referrals? You know, there's a lot you can do, but I would say that <clears throat> when I'm looking at the referrals that I'm receiving, um, I think grading them can be really, really beneficial because you know, what tends to happen is I talk to my salespeople and I say like, hey, where's your business coming from right now? And they tell me like, oh yeah, you know, XYZ person referred me 10, uh, this major client referred me 10 deals this month. And so I pull out my phone, it takes me all of one minute to pull out my CRM system. And I look and see that those 10 referrals that they got, none of them closed and they, all, they were all terrible leads. Right. And, but in their head, they're like, you know, I'm getting a ton of business there. But if, you, if they had scored those and put those into a system in a certain way, they would know that that relationship wasn't getting them meaningful business. It was just getting them business. So I really tell, I challenge people to start grading and scoring their referrals on a couple of different categories. Number one, do, do you like the type of customers that someone's sending? They might be super profitable, but if you don't like them and genuinely get enjoyment out of them, depending on where you are in your career, that might not be a relationship that you continue to invest in. Number two, how much time did you have to put into it? There's deals you might make a ton of money on, but if you had to put a ton of time into it, it may or may not make sense to, can, to get a ton more of those because you only have so many hours a week. And number three, how long did it take? Uh, was it profitable? I mean, there's so many components that you could create a lead based on or a referral based on. Um, but again, most people don't because most salespeople in any industry just ride this roller coaster of they're busy and they stop marketing and then they get slow. And yep. then slow, so they start marketing, they get busy, they get slow again. And if you if you track all this, if you know your data, it's a, it's a much easier way to, to live. Yeah, and and I think I think that's a really really important point what you just said there about uh, grading, uh, grading those referrals uh, because you're correct because sometimes, well, people are so desperate for leads that they'll just chase after anything and and it becomes unfortunately becomes a vicious cycle, doesn't it? You start chasing after these things as you said so it's not quite the right fit. So you try and shoehorn it, you invest a lot of time, it ends up either not being profitable or costing you maybe other opportunities. Yeah, and I mean, every 
you know, I say this, you know, so I work a lot in the real estate and mortgage side of side of sales, but I tell everyone, you know, everything in, in marketing, in sales really, is time versus money. When you're at the beginning of your career, you have a ton of time, you don't have a lot of money, you need to really put a lot of time into developing those referral sources, developing that business. Once you've been in it for 10 years, you have a little bit more money. Now you can start to do some of the more mass marketing. Now it can make sense to go and um, do some of those bigger things that aren't as personal, um, but that make more sense when you have a large database. Yeah, no, that that make that makes total sense. So I bet I think the the lesson here is obviously to evolve what you're doing as your business grows. Because let's face it, the people who you maybe you were engaging with to look and getting referrals off a year or two years ago may not be the right fit anymore. Yeah, and it's uh, there's a there's a great book out there called The Pumpkin Plan, and it talks about the idea that like, you know, when you have a pumpkin patch there's certain pumpkins that are just predisposed to growing better. And as soon as you figure out which ones those are, you got to cut the weaker ones off so that the, the nutrients of the vines can all go to the one that's working. And I think sales is very much like that. If you have a relationship that's there, that's taking away your time and effort from something that could have been working better. Um, yeah, no, I think that no, that's, that's a really, really good point because I think, uh, uh, obviously, as you know, the time is the one thing you can't create more of, but certainly if you focus better, you can use that time more efficiently. Uh, totally. And, you know, you know, my book, The Tangible Action Guide uh, for Real Estate Marketing, it's available on Amazon. And we talk a lot about this. We talk about the fact that the first three chapters are all about time, because before you can market something and then eventually sell something, you have to allot a certain amount of time to all these activities. There's a lot of planning involved that goes into it. Um, so just, you know, you got to be careful and you have to have a real strategy before you go into whether it's tracking your referrals or tracking the referrals that you're giving, you really have to track the time that you're spending on all of this to, to make a plan. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, and listen, this has been fantastic, Matt. And as you just mentioned there, the book is called Tag Tangible Asset, uh, Tangible Action Guide for Real Estate Marketing. Uh, great. looks like a great book here. And as you said, I mean, you've you've talked a lot about time and time blocking at the beginning. And I think that is that is really important because let's face it, as you probably well know, um, sometimes says people are the worst people at, at the planning part or blocking off time for planning. They're so eager to get in the game. They don't want to train or practice. Yeah, it's practice makes perfect. And, you know, you have to have a strategy at some point. And, you know, for most salespeople out there, I think the other thing to remember is that you're not alone. Someone else has done a good job at whatever it is you're doing. Meet them, figure out what their day looks like. Copy, cheat and steal a little bit. Uh, you know, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Yeah, I like to call it creative appropriation. <clears throat> Creative approval. I love that. I can never <laughs> use that. Yeah, no worries. All right, listen, Matt, this has been great. All Matt's information is going to be below this video, linked to the book. Uh, but before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Yeah, so I've been in the real estate and mortgage marketing game for about 10 years. My whole job is to meet with lenders and realtors uh, to kind of give them a marketing strategy. So, you know, if you, if you don't want to meet with me because, you know, maybe I'm not your personality, you can already tell from this podcast check out the book. It's short two to three page chapters. But if you're in the Midwest and you're a realtor or lender and you want to get together, I love face-to-faces. Although although this is like a half face-to-face, -face, we'll sit down with you for a glass of wine or a beer or coffee and get to know you. Uh, never charge anyone to get together for coffee and brainstorm some ideas. So always happy to meet some new people. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, well, I'm, I'll always take you up on a glass of wine, that's for sure. <laughs> thanks John all right well listen thanks again Matt uh, my name is John Golden thank you all for watching and listening and I'll see you all again soon yeah.